Welcome to another episode of Behind the Dreamers with the Starter Girls. I'm Jennifer Loading. And I'm Brianna Drillis. And today we are talking to the achievers, the creators, the dreamers, and the magic makers. These are our friends. These are your friends. And they are living the extraordinary. Today's episode is brought to you by Walt Mills Photographer of Glad Models Agency. If you are here in the Dallas or surrounding area and looking for some photography work, check out Walt Mills. You can learn more about him and his work at photosbywalt.com. And a special shout out to Upbeat Media Productions for all of your full event production needs. If that's something that you're looking for. Just let us know and we will connect you to Chloe. Awesome. All right. We're in studio today yes. at Upbeat, Upbeat Media I'm, Productions. Right. Back in studio we are today. at Upbeat Media Productions we as we speak. We are. And we've got a guest in studio today. We're super excited. It's awesome. Woo All right, so we got to introduce our guest here, Malcolm Farmer, president and general manager of the Texas Legends. All right, having been with the team since the inaugural season, Farmer has seen sales grow incrementally year after year, leading a staff that has been awarded first place in nearly every category for eight straight years. Farmer got his start in the sports industry as a manager with the Notre Dame's men's basketball team. In four seasons with the Fighting Irish, the team made three NCAA tournament appearances and a trip to the Sweet 16. Following that, Farmer was a graduate assistant for two years at Western Illinois, where he helped lead the team to their best conference finish in six years. He moved into the role of general manager with the Legends in 2016, and the team has seen consecutive seasons of most wins and most NBA call-ups in franchise history. The Legends have been pioneers in the G League and in the sports industry as a whole, being one of the first teams in the league to sell a jersey sponsorship. The first in the league to have their own team foundation. The first team to hang a car from the rafters of the arena. The first team to wear a different jersey at every home game. And the first professional sports team to have a title sponsor of a foreign state. We need a shorter bio. We do, but this is awesome. <laughs> Last piece, under his leadership, the business office finished or the, the business office finished the 2017-18 season atop the league in every category and earned top five franchise nobody really cares about any of that stuff it's but, good but stuff. I, I am two of you <laughs> do i fall as an achiever a creator a magic maker or a dreamer which, which one? one am i which one i think you're an achiever yeah you? we're gonna find out i guess I i'm not sure i meet the criteria for any of these things but you have me here nonetheless <laughs> So here we go. And welcome, because we're really happy you're here and we're excited to talk to you. I'm we excited are. to see how this goes as well and, and see which one of those categories I fall into at the That's end. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Hey, well, your bio is great. I did shorten it down. It was longer than that, but you Whoever got a lot of cool that thing stuff. Is, he's got too many words in too there. Too many words in, in there, vocabularies, yeah. So. I know. Sometimes we get these bios, and I tell you, it's hard because you got to like narrow down to a few things, and it, you really can't cover everything in a 30 minute conversation sure. so we're like hey we got to get it out there but like we're glad you're here Clip Malcolm notes. Notes and we know you them. we know you fit into one of those categories so but here's the thing listen the, wherever you fit on that spectrum here's the deal I think there's a common trait among all people that are in that space and it's that persistence and determination to do the best at whatever they do and so we bring a lot of different people on the podcast to really show our listeners that hey it doesn't really matter what walk of life you came from or where you're pursuing we're all just trying to do the best we can at whatever it is that we do, right? Absolutely. And so we're glad you're here. You know, along those lines, it's a phrase that we use is that, you know, mediocrity is unacceptable. Yeah. And you just, you know, don't lower your standard and, and keep pursuing greatness and just don't accept mediocrity. Yeah. Um, so it's right along those same lines in, in everything we do. Absolutely. I was literally walking on my, on my walk run yesterday and I was literally thinking, Raise your standards. Raise your standards. Right. So that just, you know, I love that you, you just to said faster? that. Yeah. Raise your standards. <laughs> raise your standards. I'm teasing you. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. Three more minutes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's the thing. Yeah. I think everybody that comes on our show really shares that same and embodies that same kind of something about. And drive to. Yeah. Absolutely. To rise up. Okay, Malcolm. So I want to start this off really quick. I want you to tell us how this came about. How did you get introduced to the Texas Legends? And obviously your background's in sports. So you've been in this arena for a while. Mm -hmm. So how did you get into this position? Uh, this position with the Legends, you know, the Legends started up 13 years ago. Um, I was there from the proverbial day zero um, before the team was announced and got introduced to ownership by a mutual friend um, whom I knew from my days coaching at SMU. And, you know, I had a little runway from SMU, and so I just jumped in and started, frankly, volunteering uh, wherever I could, you know, called a glorified intern position. Um, and as opportunities presented themselves, I guess they thought that I could handle it or be a good fit, and it just kept, kept growing from there. 
Um, if I'm being totally honest, which is the goal here today, is right. you know, full transparency, total honesty. When I first came to the Legends, I had no intent of being there two years later, much less 13 years later. Um, my, my initial thought process was, I'm a college basketball guy. I've been in that for 10 years. I'm going to you know, do this for a year, and then let's see where the college basketball carousel, what openings there are, what opportunities, and I'll jump back on that ride. And that year went by. I enjoyed what we did with the Legends. Um, I looked at the opportunities with, within college basketball, was offered a few, and I just decided that they weren't quite the right fit. So I'm just going to do this one more year, and then we'll see what you know the right opportunity will come along in college basketball, and away I'll go. And frankly, by the end of that second year, I wasn't really even looking at college basketball anymore. Um, having been in that world, I certainly still see uh, opportunities and, and people ask me occasionally, hey, would you consider this? Would you consider that? But I really haven't looked at any of those opportunities for at least the, the past 10 years because I've grown to really enjoy what we do with the Legends, both on the court and perhaps more importantly, off the court. Um, and, and I don't think that I could replace that with anything at this point. That is so fascinating. So you were with Notre Dame and then was it Illinois? Was there Western a, Illinois. Was, and then did I hear you say SMU as well? Florida Atlantic and then SMU. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. That was my college basketball sure. days, about 10 years in college basketball in various capacities. Right. That's incredible. Yeah. I shortened the bio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we left a few tidbits out of there. We like, we could have, we could have done all of it. About yeah, we don't need to do all that. <laughs> No one really yeah. cares. You know, yeah. it's boring yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, not everybody. <laughs> Thank you. So were, you, were you responsible for the recruiting as well when you were with those teams, uh, high school student, recruit, like basketball student? I was recruiting. involved in the recruiting at all places at SMU uh, in, in various capacities. And one of those capacities was recruiting at that time. Um, and that was something that I didn't love. Um, and so that became part of, you know, the transition out was like, I, I don't, People go into their their careers, you go to college, you have a dream of what you want to do. And very few people actually end up doing that for their life. Like they may do it for a period, but then you pivot and you adjust. And you know, in high school and in college, I wanted to be a college basketball head coach. That was my dream. That was my goal. And I was on a path, having worked in college basketball for 10 years, where I certainly had seen what that would look like. I didn't get to be a head coach, but I came to the realization that I'm not sure I really want to do that. There's parts of that job that perhaps aren't what I thought they were. Perhaps I don't think that my personality, the things that I enjoy are going to work as well as I thought they would. You know, and you learn, you know, no matter what the career path, you learn more as you get into it. But what that career path really is, not necessarily what you see on TV or reading a book, but like the nitty gritty of it. And I came to the realization that recruiting is a huge part of being a head coach. And I can't sit here at that time. I can't sit here and say that I love it. And if you don't love something, it's awfully hard to be really good at it. Mm -hmm. um, I think amongst your interviews, your, your episodes, I think that a common theme is probably that the people that you talk to, they love what they do. Mm -hmm. So when you wake up in the morning, it doesn't feel like you're going to work. You're going to do something that you want to do. Um, and I think that it just makes it easier to work. It makes it easier to put in that time to get where you want to go. I think that's really what led to my quote unquote career pivot into more of the front office than on the coaching side. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome. It's such great insight because I mean, even when, as you said, it, in any field, in any market in any arena depending on what you're doing if you don't love what you do you know it's it's really it's like pulling teeth every day it's, it's kind of depressing actually no question i mean you don't want to be a workaholic in life just i'll say that point blank people may disagree with me but it's not a good thing but when you enjoy what you do even when you're working a lot of hours it doesn't feel like being a workaholic because you're truly like i want to do this you know, when I go home, I'm spending time with my family and I'm, I try to put my phone away and put all that stuff away, but I can't say that my mind isn't always working on, Hey, this problem or this opportunity or this challenge, 
even when I'm could be completely disconnected from everything else, but I'm still thinking about those things. And I think that would only be the case if I enjoy what I'm doing. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't spend the mental time just thinking about it. On my morning run, I wouldn't like that's what I think about. I'd try not to think about running faster because that's just painful. So <laughs> that's funny that you say that too, because we often talk about that and about that morning time, the workout time being a great like I, I work out every day too. And then before I do that, we walk the dogs. And so that's usually when I get a lot of my inspired mm -hmm. ideas or I work through conversations that I need to have with people, like how I'm gonna, you know, go through it. That seems to be the time that Mm -hmm. all that happens so but i agree with you on all of that about the the loving what you do and all of our people that come on here do truly love what they do and i do think that's important and when you figure that out because so many people we've talked about this so many times on this show go through life working a job at eight to five every day and they absolutely hate what they do and i cannot imagine honestly because i've been blessed to be able and, and i'm not going to say that happened overnight because it took me no i was question. in a, i was in a career for 20 something years and just left it and created a whole new business and you know it, it's not an overnight thing but i cannot imagine going to retirement and having worked a job that i absolutely despise every single day and getting up and just having to punch that clock and do that Can you? there's a point in your life where that's i think everyone has to do that right and, you know, we're fortunate that we've had the opportunity to grow within that mm -hmm. type of career mm -hmm. and get into things that we, we really truly love and enjoy. So I think that having a means to an end, mm -hmm. you know, that like, I, I truly believe that everyone, it's mm -hmm. healthy and good to go through I, that period of time where it's like, it is work and it is a grind and it's not necessarily something you enjoy, but if you can see where you want to go and be every day moving towards that then it's worth it and you can get to a place where you're truly doing what you love. Um, and and I, I say that, that every day you're working towards it. It's impossible to get from A to Z in a moment's decision because you just can't make that leap. But if you make the decision and you go from A to partway to B and the next day maybe you're closer to B and the next day maybe you get to B and if you do it every day, then you can get to the place you want to go. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's your stuff, Malcolm. Yeah. Good stuff. I had a question. I totally forgot <laughs> what I was going to ask you. Oh, well, and, and not only that, Malcolm, I know that you do a lot, even aside from, you know, the basketball, which I played bat some basketball. I didn't do college, but that was always my sport. I'm like a big fan of, you know, from Houston, I'm a big fan of the Rockets. So especially back when they were like really doing good stuff back in the day. Um, but anyways, aside from that, you do a lot with entrepreneurs because I'm mm -hmm. part of that organization. Mm -hmm. and, and I've actually attended before the pandemic hit, I attended several of the events at the Legends. And then of course things changed for a while. But I want to talk a little bit about that, what you're doing for the entrepreneurs. And then we're going to come back to the, the, the Legends, what's special about them. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, what we're doing with small, medium businesses in our community, it, it is part of what the Legends are. So it all ties together, right? I, d I believe very strongly that a sports team should not be only what it does on the court or on the field. If you're the Mavericks and all you do is your 41 home games or the Cowboys and you just have your eight home games, it's got to be about more than that. Sports should be about more than, you know, in basketball, putting a, a round ball through a round goal. Um, that's pretty shallow existence if that's all it's about. Or in football, taking this funny-shaped ball and ramming into people to move it two feet further, closer to an end zone. And so, like, what we're doing in our community to bring small, medium, large companies together, we do it every month. We do it three times a month. And that's how we look at it, as this is a year-round endeavor that the legends are about. And our community connections must live outside of our games. And that's part of what we're doing here with small and medium sized businesses through all of our networking events, our owners club memberships is we're getting people together and making a difference in our community. Um, and that can mean, you know, people doing business with one another, perhaps more importantly, it can mean just helping one another. We had someone present Kent Legrand from in touch credit union. He presented at a lunch that we held a couple months ago and he literally asked the question, you know, how many people in here are frustrated with our government? And, you know, hey, what frustrations we may have, no matter what side of the aisle you may sit on, right? And people would raise their hand and say, I'm frustrated with this in Washington, D.C. or that. 
And he was simply using that to, to, to develop a common bond amongst all the people in the room. And he finished by saying that if you want to see change, you want to make our community better, you cannot look to Washington, D.C. or anybody else. You need to look at the people in this room and you need to get mad. And he says, when I say mad, I don't mean emotional and upset. I mean, get mad and make a difference, using it as an, as an acronym. And don't just sit there and complain, but get mad, make a difference to move towards the things that you want. And that's literally, I mean, I was like, that's a great embodiment of what the legends are trying to do. Of we want to bring our community together where they can help one another, because especially through the pandemic, but you can do a lot more things that are good and great, both for our community and your business. When you're connecting with others, you're seeing them, you're shaking a hand, and you're finding out what drives them personally, what truly motivates them. And it's not always going and closing the next big deal. It can be, hey, I want to, would love to be able to partner and help out this charity. I got this elementary school that we're working with. They're struggling in this way. We can get together. I know a person and we can help out and make a difference in that way. It's awesome. And, yeah, it's relational building, really. And I, I think about it, we talked about that. We had a guest on one of our shows not too long ago where we were talking, Rob Bliss. We were talking about networking oh, yeah. and how people underestimate the power of building relationships and business. And I always joke, you know, we talk about LinkedIn because I'm sure you are, all of us are every day get hit up mm -hmm. by somebody through LinkedIn that's trying to sell something. And I'm like, I don't know where they envision that we're going to build a relationship when I know 10 people that do what you do that I built a relationship with outside of that, that media, you know, that source. So I, I, I'm with you on the whole relational uh, building. We, we have no interest in transactions, to yeah. be honest. It's, it's like, sure. let's get people in a room, connect with them, grow the relationship, and see where we can take things. Yeah. And I don't just look at that from our networking business development events. I look at that at our games. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, someone once told me, you know, the games for us, and, and perhaps we're at a, at a size and a scope where we can do this, but it's not just come and sit there in your seats. It's have a good time, but it's, it's personal, right? Um, a person used the phrase and, and, you know, perhaps, our audience is too young to know this, but it's it's where everybody knows your name, mm -hmm. right? You know, yep. back to Cheers, right? Yeah. It's when you walk in and it's everyone knows that's this person and you want to connect with them and, and introduce them to your other friend that you brought. And it's a personal feeling and not a, hey, I bought a ticket and I'm going to go to the game, sit there and go home. Yeah, and That's just who we want to be and that's the way we're going to operate. That would have good, been a good moment to play some Cheers music because now I got it stuck in my head. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be seven be humming this all afternoon now. So, Malcolm, what? I, and I've been following you in LinkedIn, so I see some of your posts and all the excitement that's going on at these games and stuff. Tell us, so for people who've never been to the Legends game, what are they going to find at these games? Tell us what's going on here because you guys got a lot of stuff happening. Uh, they're going to find craziness. Um, I mean, look, I'm not... I, I'm not sure I want to explain it because I want people to come <laughs> right. and experience it. I can honestly say that like the bas I'm a basketball guy, right? I came up through college basketball. I'm as competitive as I'll get out. I want to win. But we frankly don't want our games to be only about the basketball. Yeah. We want our games to be, I got, you know, two daughters and a son. Some of them don't have any, and you know, they could care less about the basketball, win or lose, like whatever, right? And as they've gotten older, I can appreciate what a lot of our fans have said to me in the past, but it's very challenging to find an event, especially when your kids approach teenage years, where all members of the family unit can go and have a great time because their interests as they age become varied, right? I've got everything from a four-year-old to a 16-year-old, so it's all over the map, and to have a family event where we can go and they all look forward to it. They may look forward to it for different reasons. They may have some different experiences while they're there, but they still have a shared experience and they leave all being able to talk about their shared experience. And that's the memory that we want to create. 
So our games, the basketball is really good. But if you want to see the best basketball in the Metroplex, go to the Mavericks. We are never going to be as good as the Mavericks are on the court. We have some really good young players. They're fun to watch. They play hard as heck. But if you want to have the greatest entertainment for your family, then I think that we're the right fit. You can come out, and whether you're into basketball or not, don't worry about it. We're going to have some fun. Whether it be kids, you know, putting me in a dunk tank and throwing a basketball and and getting me all wet, you know, I might get a squirt gun and squirt it back at I them now. Recently. But but these, these <laughs> like, things that you like don't traditionally think of at a, at a sporting event, right. that's yeah. what we want to be. That's who we are. We're a fun night out. I'm sold. I'm Fantastic. Let's you know. go. <laughs> I cannot wait to take my kids. You have to see kids. the photos. Like, follow them on, on LinkedIn. So you have to see the, the photos. Because it's definitely an experience. It's I haven't. I don't know if I've been. Actually, I need to get to one. I haven't been to one yet. I, I've seen, like I said, I've seen the photo. I feel like I've, at some point I have. but I have a 16 to an 8, too. Mm -hmm. So I have that kind of range as well. But I... I think this sounds so fun. So bring the 16-year-old out. Let him, him or her bring a friend. Bring the 8-year-old out. They're going to have a blast. we got inflatables, you know, hula hoops, coloring zones. Like, you really try to hit I love it. a gaming zone for the sold. older kids. Inflatables. <laughs> World's biggest slide, I, I'm telling you. Um, that thing weighs 5,000 pounds, though. The setup and tear down is not so much fun. But that we don't make the fans do, okay? Um, but we really try to have something for every age for every demographic even if you don't like basketball my, my wife has called it a basketball country club we can go and i don't like the basketball that's fine i can go do all these other things socially and that's that's what we want to be oh wow that is so great i love it okay i have a quick question yeah. for you well i don't know if it's quick. i probably have a this long is gonna answer bring so. it okay this is going <laughs> to kind of bring it back to you know your experience you know mm -hmm. you mentioned you kind of evolved in your positions with the texas legends and weaved into this general manager role and now president um that i'm guessing how many years have you been at the 13 okay so along those 13 years and i know you mentioned the first two you were planning on skedaddling yeah. yes <laughs> but okay between year two and year 13 did you have times as you were building the organization where you wanted to throw in the towel or you wanted to leave and maybe uh, something kept you there, something kept you in the game? Or I'm not really a throw-in-the-towel kind of guy. Um, have there been challenges and things that were, were harder than maybe I thought they would be? Yes. But I um, personally, and this isn't the team, but like personally, I think that I'm at my best. I thrive the most when I am in a corner. And there may not be many ways out. Um, or a lot of people may say, that's not possible. And, you know, from a motivational standpoint, that definitely trips my trigger. Like, no, no, tell me again what I can't do, what we can't do. Um, it's like we're on it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, like I, See, I, told I you definitely you're, you're thrive an achiever. on that. Yeah. You See, are an achiever. I think my out. staff are achievers, and I may occasionally help them, you know, with some motivation. But other than my staff does all that. But I, I definitely enjoy that challenge. Like, I would say this. Have I been approached with jobs that would be easier? 100%. But I look at what we do, and we lead our league in all these categories, and that's great. Frankly, a lot of them don't matter to me very much. What matters a lot more to me is that we lead the league in community engagement and in smiles at our games and in original entertainment. Mm. Like, that's more important. But if it was easy, A, all these teams would do it, and B, I wouldn't enjoy it. So I like the challenge. I like that it's hard. Um, and I like that we're unique. We're not trying to be the Mavericks. We're not trying to be the Cowboys. We will never compete with either one of those teams' impressions, broadcast views, merchandise sales, so on and so forth. But we're not trying to be them. We're trying to be us. And we're trying to do things that are different and you know, I believe very strongly that there's a difference between going to a game and having a smile because you're having the experience you expected to have. 
sit in my seat, Cowboys score a touchdown, here it is. Like, I'm smiling. It's good. And I think there's a very different kind of smile that happens when something occurs that you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. When something happens that's like organic and authentic and your kids are sharing that laugh and smile with you, it's different. And that's the type of entertainment that we want to be. That's so great. Yeah, good stuff, Malcolm. Like putting a, a dunk tank in a basketball arena, which you think is easy, but that thing weighs a ton when you fill it with water. And um, I guarantee you, any dunk tank you've ever seen, they got leaks. Yeah. It's just they're always outside, so you don't notice. But when you put it inside an indoor venue, all of a sudden those leaks are little problems that you need yeah, to figure especially out. Especially on so, a basketball court. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff, Malcolm. All right, Malcolm, I want to ask you a question. If I want to, uh, being a leader, obviously you have a team that you're helping and you keep talking about how you're, they're the achievers. And I, I think you are too, because it does take a leader to make your team move. They do the work, but yes, you have to be great at leading people. So offering advice to somebody, you know, somebody that is maybe going through something right now, I don't know what that is. We have a lot of entrepreneurs in here, but anybody that's maybe working on a challenge or trying to work to that next level, Chief, what advice would you offer them? I think there's a lot of challenges in today's world, you know, from, you know, hiring people to retaining people. Mm -hmm. um, and so my, my advice, I literally had a lunch with someone yesterday and we talked about this, is simply don't do what you've always done. Mm -hmm. Um if, if something isn't working great, you can't be afraid to still have the same goal, still get, you know, ha have an objective of the same end result. But the way that you get there has to change. Um, and it doesn't mean that as you do something different than you've done in the past, it doesn't mean it's going to work. But you can't be afraid to try it. Jump in, give it a whirl. You're going to learn something at the very least. And then you can pivot from that and adjust yet again until you start finding a new way to do things that gets you where you want to go. And that's, I mean, look, I, I think, you know, I've, I've been doing the with the Legends for 13 years. If you look at the last 20 years, I, I use the sports industry as an example, but the sports industry has changed a lot from call it 2000, the year 2000 to the year 2020 massive changes, which if you, we can go through them and all that, but huge change. And now in the last two years, I would argue it's changed that much again. And it doesn't mean that like the changes in the first 20 years don't matter. They absolutely do, but they happen so gradually that we could gradually pivot and adjust and, you know, like, all oh, this is coming our way. We may have to deal with it the next few years. In the last two in, in looking ahead, there's been 20 years worth of changes yet again, but we have to approach what we're doing in a completely different way. There's no gradual change now. We need to adjust quickly and try something new to address those problems. So it's not some, you know, fantastic quote or anything like that, but don't do it the same way you've always done it if it's not working. Just don't be afraid to try something different and new. It doesn't mean you have to do it that way forever. You might learn something new and adjust from there. That's good advice, Malcolm. I agree with you. I love it. Some people get stuck set in their ways, and that's why businesses fail a lot of times yeah. because they're not willing to pivot. They keep on just repeating the same patterns over and over and over. And it's funny. I'm working with an accelerator right now, and that was the topic of our conversation this morning is just being, you know, be willing to do something different and change and stop thinking this is the only way that you're going to. Sure. And you may have to collect over. information several, like over a period of time. Yeah. You know, like I'm finding I'm working on a project and I'm trying something new with it, but I'm not going to just test it once. I'm right. going to test oh, yeah. it several times yeah. to then receive information mm -hmm. and evaluate and learn, you know. And, and people, have still, go ahead. Yeah, so many people are afraid of failure. So they don't yes. want to try and they don't realize that failure actually equals learning. You're going to learn from doing that failure. That's how things become great. Mm -hmm. You know, and the hard thing is, is also people say, I don't want to do it because it's hard. We've all done hard. Get over it. Yeah, yeah get over that. It, you know? if, it's, <laughs> if you don't want to do something because it's hard, you're in the wrong. Exactly. Whatever you're doing is the wrong thing, thing to be doing. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing like to keep in mind is a lot of times people look at it like, well, if I change, I want to really think this through and get real detailed and right. dig in into how I want to make this change. And I think all that's valid. But at some point, you have to jump in and do it. Yeah. You know, I think the phrase is the enemy of progress is perfection. We can have an idea. The only way to 
make the idea truly better and eventually you get close to perfecting it is to just start. Yeah. Make the mistake. Mm-hmm. And that's fine because now we know the mistake and we can adjust and fix it. So I, you know, my staff sometimes gets frustrated with me because I'm like, we'll cross those bridges when we get to them. We don't have to have all the answers right. to try something now because the thing that we're afraid of might go wrong might be a total non-issue. Mm-hmm. And then we're spending yes. all this time thinking about, about it. it. And I'm not saying don't plan ahead and have, you know, contingencies in place. I, those are good things to do and absolutely do them. But you can't not do something because, well, I'm not sure what, what will I do if this happens or that happens. Yeah. You know, if it's not involving life and death. Yeah, there can be a lot of hypotheticals go for there. it. Sure. <laughs> they get stuck on. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes don't, you just don't gotta... get frozen. Yeah, what I'm not. The, what is the it? Thomas Edison quote? I oh, the definition of insanity like is doing the same thing over and over like, and expecting one, different results. Well, there's one where he said, you know, everyone asked him, was like, well, you failed a thousand oh. times. He goes, no, I just found a thousand ways not to, to make a life. Yeah, not to make, yeah, <laughs> not to make a life. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, if you, well, and you know, if you really, I mean, that's how I approach everything. I very seldom, I'm kind of a jump in kind of person. I don't think a lot of things through and I know it drives people crazy, but I learn every time I'm either going to fall and I'm not going to do that again, or I get it right. That's the way I look at it. And I just, when I see things, I just go, you know what? If we fall, we fall. We're going to get back up. Yeah, you're not going to keep me down very long. That's for sure. I don't think any of us in this room are going to be kept down very long. So, I mean. Sure. You know, great advice, Malcolm. Thanks for sharing all that. Just trying to keep up. Yeah. All right. I think we should do some fun. We're going to switch gears and do some fun. Okay. I'm ready. These weren't great. They were all great. I'm ready. Whatever you got. All right. You starting? You got some? Sure. Okay. Favorite favorite basketball team, like NBA basketball team? Well, the Dallas Mavericks, of course, right? Okay. Good. That's a good answer. All right. Um, Favorite food, Malcolm? Spaghetti. Spaghetti. First concert? You too. Oh, wow, that's a really good first concert. <laughs> um, favorite, maybe book that you've read. I'm sure you got several, but one uh, that's coming to mind that you've read. That's just kind of. Been. I mean, I like to read. So, like you know, many years ago, Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. Mm. More recently, The Obstacle Is the Way. Um, you know this book. So. See, I love that question. We get book lists from doing this. It's like I find it. I have an art mm-hmm. about one. So, see, got a new book. Bucket list travel destination. Uh, my wife is the travel person, so wherever she wants to go. <laughs> good answer. <Right. laughs> that was a good I answer. hope you're. I hope she's gonna tune in. <laughs> that was a good one. All just right, got points. Yeah. Last question. What's in your Amazon cart? Um, I don't really use Amazon. This is interesting. Yeah. Um, my wife does. So if I really want something, I just send her the you link her and. Book? And she's got the whatever the fast delivery, whatever that setup is. Yeah, exactly. Like you know, that's good. All business is local. If you want to solve things, like you do it locally. (laughs) So I'm not, you know. He's like, I need socks. I'm going to get a relationship. (laughs) No, that's great. I always love to ask that question because it's so funny to get the answers from people. Like some people just use like I can tell you there's stuff in mine all the time. Somebody's, and I don't have to tell I don't even know what's in it because my son puts it in there. I, yeah. yeah. I try not to go on any of those yeah. sites. So, well, that's amazing. It's been really wonderful yeah. having you today. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You guys do a fantastic job. Thank and, you. you know, you got quite the, uh, quite the guest list. Yeah, we're excited. And well, and we, to our listeners, if they want to come check out the Texas Legends, see what you guys are all about, where do we want to send them? I'll just go to our website, texlegends.com. We got, Seven different summer camps this summer. So if you're looking for a place for the kids to have a good time, be safe, learn something, and maybe get a little bit better at basketball, we're a great spot for that too. Okay. We'll make sure when this goes out too that we get the link in there so that they know where to no go. No worries. And check it out. So, so textlegends.com. And is it Text Legends on social media as well? It's at Texas Legends, you know, Twitter, Facebook, all that good okay, stuff. Great. So yeah. Awesome. They're all over the places. Yay. All right, we do want to say to our listeners, of course, if you enjoy our show, please be sure to give us a rating both on iTunes and Facebook. We can't do this without you. Only give a rating if it's five stars. That's right. Only if it's five (laughs) stars. And hit that subscribe button on YouTube. And I'm going to leave you with a motivational quote of the day. And I did change it. Okay, I'm ready. (laughs) Now, unfortunately, I don't know who said this. (laughs) (laughs) However, I'm going to say it anyway because it's good. (laughs) It's not fun to fail, but it just might be the only way to succeed. I would argue it's not 
it says it just might be. I'd say it is the only way to succeed. Good job. There you go. Damn. So, Mike, mic drop. <laughs> That's right. He has spoken. <laughs> All right. And to, in order to live the extraordinary, you must start. And every start begins with a decision. You guys take care. Be safe and be kind to one another. We will see you next time.